Hey everyone and welcome to the Learning Lab. Today I'm doing my review of Saxon Mathematics 5. So as with 5.4 you get your big gigantic textbook. You also get two other books with it. One solutions manual with all the answers in and the other one is test and worksheets. The worksheets are not actually for the textbook there in addition which are actually your fact practice sheets and the tests are the um, 23 tests that you get to go with um, the unit. So as with 5.4, you've got 120 lessons. You've also got 12 investigations. They are not included in the total. So add those on, so it's 132. And then you've got your tests as well. And I think there were 23, if I'm not mistaken. I just checked, there were definitely 23 tests. So it follows the same format as 5.4 in that you'll have your fact practice sheet. Um, it, which will vary, it could be addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, percents, it can be a range of things. We have always done ours at the end of the day, um, not the end of the day, end at the end of maths, it's just the way we've always done it. You've got your mental maths, problem solving, then you've got your new concept, you've got your lesson practice, which relates to the new concept you've just learnt, and then you go into mixed practice, which is 30 questions that can range from anything up to that point that you have learned. There is always a really big mix of skills. So there's always word problems and then you get a bunch of others and they're all different skills that you've learned up to that point. They always have investigations. So in this case, there are 12. Um, the investigations are always different than a regular lesson. They usually focus on one skill maybe a couple depending on what it is um, but generally speaking it's mainly one skill and um, they often include manipulatives in the previous 5-4 occasionally um, you're drawing something measuring something so it's more hands-on than the regular lessons and as you can see this one's quite long We use this in exactly the same way as we did 5-4, so we've always done our mental math and problem solving first, then we'll do our new concept and lesson practice together, and then she will do her mixed practice um, at her own pace. Okay, so now we'll talk about pros and cons. So pros, it's the spiral incremental method. This is a pro for me. Um, I do like the spiral method. However, as I said in my previous video, I can see the advantages of mastery, but at this stage, we just are happy with the spiral. I love the mental maths. I've said that before. I think it's fantastic. I love the fact that they give you little hints and tricks throughout to, um, to help you be quicker with your mental maths. I really love the way the new concept is laid out. And I love the short lesson practice. Sorry, that's mixed presses. I like the short lesson practice that follows um, the new concept that you've just learnt. Cons, I've said before, I think there are so many skills in the mixed practice. Um, that can be a con, it also can be a pro if you like rigorous maths, because it does really keep them on their toes, they go from one thing to the other, so they really have to be um, focused and um, on the ball and really remembering all these other skills that they've learnt previously in different um, lessons. Now, I found in 5.4, uh, sorry, 9.54. In 6.5, there was a ton of review from 5.4. It was, the, <laughs> I mean, the, there was a ton. So, the, although with 5.4, I started from the beginning because it was a new way of doing um, the maths, with 6.5, I did not start from the beginning. I didn't need to because a lot of what was in, covered in 6.5 was covered in 5.4. So, it was completely redundant to do start from the beginning in our situation. Now if your child hasn't grasped some of those skills from 5-4 then obviously that's different. You would start from the beginning and work your way through but I knew that she was really comfortable with them so I felt really confident in skipping um, a bunch of lessons to get to a point where I felt like um, we were learning some new material and perhaps reviewing some of the more difficult skills but not um, starting from bare bones again from the beginning. So what I did was I just went through, I got myself a pad and painstakingly went through each lesson um, to decide whether or not I thought we needed to do that one. Um, and it worked out that we skipped about 47 lessons. It wasn't consecutively, so some of them um, 
were at the beginning, some of them were in the middle, but in total around about 47 lessons we skipped. So there was still quite a lot of lessons left in the book to do, so I don't think it was a waste of money um, in that, you know, we could have just skipped this level completely. You know, there was still quite a bit in here to, to, to learn that was new, um, or that I felt like we should we shouldn't skip. But I did include in that um, all of the investigations. So we did, um, in my total, I have wanted us to do all of the investigations as well. Because I think the investigations are really good. So that's why we are doing those too. So I guess you could see that as a con. Um, but you don't really know until your student um, has finished um, the course. As in 5-4, how much more help... Uh, or assistance they would need until you get the next level in and then you think, ah, okay, well, we definitely don't need help with that. You know, we've grasped that. We can move on because, as I said before, Saxon does review quite a lot at the beginning of the book. Um, but until you finish the, the other level, because all the new material is at the back, you don't know whether or not um, you're going to need a bit more practice on them. So I don't regret buying 6.5. And also because you can't see properly inside the book until you purchase it. So you don't know for sure until you've actually painstakingly gone through and thought, well, actually, you know, we don't need help with that. We've done that before in 5.4. So what I would say is if your child has done 5.4 from beginning to end, it is highly likely that there will be a chunk of 6.5 that they can miss out. If they've grasped everything that they learned in 5.4. If there was any issues in 5.4 or that you're a bit uncertain about things then definitely um, don't have any doubts at all about getting 6.5 because obviously you'll need to. If your student aced everything in 5.4 then be prepared to skip quite a lot of 6.5 but as I've said I did think that there were some really good things in there otherwise I wouldn't have got had that many lessons left for us to do but one caveat I have now purchased 7.6 um, and there are some lessons from 6.5 that repeat in 7.6. So in theory, I could probably whittle my little, um, sorry, that's my cat knocking stuff over. I could probably get down the amount of lessons that I've, I've set aside for us to do in 6.5 lower because of what's in 7.6. Um, but, you know, I've already got it. I've purchased it. So we're just going to do the lessons that I've picked for us to do. Um, but again, it's something to bear in mind. However, I will say there is a, lot of new material in 7.6 so I don't think you'll ever have this problem I mean I don't know for sure but I don't think you'll ever have this problem with so much overlap again because there is a lot of new material in 7.6 compared to 6.5 but if you're coming from a different curriculum and you haven't done 5.4 at all then you'll definitely need to do 6.5 I wouldn't skip and go straight to 7.6 at all but if you've done 5.4 then you will find there's quite a bit of overlap between them um, that's what I found anyway. Okay, so I hope that was hopeful for help for you. So to sum it up, it continues Saxon's method. Still really happy with the Saxon curriculum overall, but there is quite a bit of overlap between these two levels. However, this doesn't appear to be the case with the next level up in this one. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> and although there is an overlap, I still have found a few lessons that we can do in this one. So it's not a complete waste of money. And if you have never done this um, and you're at the level, then get this because you'll need to have done this. But if you've done this one, there might be quite a lot of this one that you can skip. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in our next video.